So what you see now on this one minute chart are the levels for today, Friday, May 24. It is now Monday morning, May 27, about 10.30 a.m. as I'm making this post-market video of what happened on Friday. So I did not trade anything on Friday, so we'll talk through what happened or would have happened had you chosen to take trades at the levels. And by the way, in defense of these levels, let me just point out that 518.30, 533.65 were two of the levels out of the calculator this morning. Everything in the middle was just areas I identified as having a likely chance of reactions for trades, but they were not formula-derived levels. So this first level here at 527.74, they were above it at 945. If you had taken a long trade, yes, you would have been out of the money, but nothing to concern yourself because of the time factor involved below the fumble threshold. So when they pulled up, the base hit would have been pulled out pretty quickly. Four points or more if you wanted it. This level was kind of important, at least initially, but you have gotten to trouble at 529. So 528.95, applied a five cent buffer. So this level was, you know, had some significance. You can see they kind of came up close to it here. They you know, spent some time around it, but you would have been on the wrong side of this trade because a short trade here would have immediately put you out of the money. You would have fumbled, and I have the exact math here in the, in the uh, tracking log, but you would have lost money because it would have uh, you fumbled, lost money on that. You would have reversed, but it would have been up toward the highs here, and they never got high enough to pull a base hit out of the reversal to wash some of that loss out, and you would have essentially fumbled again. I call that a TKO. Never got to this zone here. This zone would have probably been important considering everything else that happened. After the fact, I didn't look at the market at all until this morning, honestly. So just trying to analyze what, what happened. Didn't take any trades and just as well. Um, you know, missed possible profit here, but avoided a loss on that other level. So I'm going to show you like the weekly and the daily charts because, well, Friday was the close of a week and there's some significance to that, I believe. Do you remember when we were looking at the 120 minute chart, the two hour chart, and I said it was likely that they would retrace a portion of that big move the day before where I was long um, several, uh, more than a handful of contracts and out of the money? Well, they did. And not only did they do that, they retraced half or, or so um, more of the weekly chart. Uh, the weekly candle, sorry, I'm looking at the daily chart, the daily um, candle from before. So this, you know, this was the retracement, but where they closed, I don't think is a whole lot of significance here. Um, it, it is a retracement of, of, the, of the move down before that out of this zone we identified, but looking at the weekly chart, they gave us this little doji candle and it happens to be the, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, sixth candle up in this move here. So, that's kind of significant. I mean, it's kind of an important area, all-time highs. But here's the thing. My volume is kind of screwed up here. Let's stop. There we go. Thing is, it's really low volume. So when you see, you know, a signal like this on a really low volume, I don't know. It's less important. Although the timing's right, the area is important. Um, not saying they're going to pull back. I mean, they could, generally speaking, if you had really high volume and you had the timing right and you had a signal of a trend change like this little doji candle here or a big tail candle or something. Um, I'd be looking for reasons on other smaller time frames why they might want to find a top, top here and come back. But then again, this, since this is a weekly chart, we're saying, you know, a pullback of more than a few days, like a you know, week or more. But it's just low volume, so I'm not sure how I'm going to interpret that at this point because let's say next week they go higher and bust through this area. Um, they could still have a whole week, you know, the rest of this week, I should say, starting tomorrow, to come back and close below the high of this. You know, maybe we get another doji candle or something like that. But anyway, hard to say on the weekly chart, but I just find it interesting that's how they closed. And also just so, so little volume lately, and they're pushing this thing up on light institutional participation, if you want to call it that. So back to the one-minute chart for the full day. Here's the two trades. Had you chosen to take them at these levels, I'm glad I did not. Um, you know, profitable, unprofitable at those two levels. And let's see how this translated into... This, I, was, I wouldn't say profits uh, this case because it wasn't. It would have been a loss uh, on that day had you chosen to take the trades. But we'll take a look at that right now. And it looks like this. Quick base hit earlier on. Next level, 10.5 points lost when they did a few things above that fumble threshold. And 7.5 points when you reversed it. Both lost. So it would have uh, you, would, you would have ended underwater. I didn't take any trades. So here's where we're at on the averages if you want to take a look at that. So really... Uh, nothing to do until tomorrow morning. I mean, this the futures are open, I think, until 12 today, kind of abbreviated hours. 
took a look at them this morning for a little while when they opened at 930. And um, they went up, but they came back down. They're kind of on the flat line pretty much where they closed um, on Friday. Don't know where they're going to open tomorrow morning, but we'll be back and analyze the the day in the morning. I'll put out the numbers for tomorrow. Thanks, and see you then.